today, Mr. Varun Kurich. He's, he had, he's a Vice President Marketing and Portfolio Head at Diageo India. Diageo in the recent past we've seen has focused a lot on premiumization of its category. And Varun is here to tell us more. Varun, hello. Hi, Sibran. Uh, it's, uh, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for a warm welcome and lovely introduction. And I'm uh, really happy to be here. Varun, let's get started. Firstly, uh, a big focus for Diageo India has been premiumization. And marquee brands such as Signature, House of McDonald's and Antiquity have moved up the value chain. What's the insight behind moving these brands to the premium upper prestige segment? Yeah, look, I mean, as as Diageo, and you would have been hearing the word premiumization pretty much, uh, not just in the category, but in the entire industry. But for this particular category, it's becoming increasingly important. And for the prestige portfolio, essentially, we want to accelerate, uh, you know, our play in the in the prestige portfolio by premiumization and by coming out with purposeful brand uh, positioning, right? And as you see, it's a, it's a very exciting time for the alcohol industry. Uh, you know, consumers are seeking out unique liquids, unique experiences, bespoke experiences, and uh, you know, specific crafts, products, or brands that tell a story. Uh, you marry that with the age of social media, which is all about instant sharing of experiences versus you know, dealing things or or possessions. And then, of course, you look at consumers of today who are now wanting to drink better versus wanting to drink more. And this is this was, a, this was I believe, a, a trend that would have started around the pandemic, but it has stayed. So when you look at all of these things together, and then you look at the numbers, uh, you know, within the premium segment, it is growing at double digits. So that's where, uh, you know, the entire uh, category is, is, is shifting towards. And keeping all of that in mind, I think it is important for us to hence position Indian whiskeys, uh, you know, more as distinct offerings, high quality, differentiated, and marry that with the right people and ingredients and processes to come out with bespoke liquids, essentially, that are made in India and for the world. Uh, and when we look at the prestige portfolio, the one that I handle, uh, you know, across brands, purposeful positioning has become increasingly important. Uh, so if you look at a brand like McDonald's, for example, uh, McDonald's is, 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 we are now transforming McDonald's into the house of McDonald's, you know, creating that premiumization journey and we have pretty much started now. Uh, we looped in, uh, you know, Karthik Aryan to celebrate, uh, you know, the limitless possibilities of friendship with our latest campaign, Yaro Ali Bhatt. Uh, and in, in driving in a lot more purposeful uh, brand positioning, a purposeful play across the brand narrative. Uh, we also uh, had uh, uh, an, a hearing impaired actor named Saad feature in the film uh, as well again uh, thereby representing you know the uh, you know the persons of of uh, disabilities into our advertising campaigns as well who are highly underrepresented and you see this purposeful positioning you see this drive for uh, for for more meaning across of all, uh, across uh, across brands so you'll see a brand like signature for example which is all about living good and doing good and uh, uh, with Signature, we want to drive in the message of, you know, living good and doing good and taking care of your environment or even giving back to the environment. Uh, again, our, our, our campaign with uh, Ayushman Purana, which we recently launched, is, is uh, pretty much a testament of that. And then we are, of course, uh, you know, with Signature itself, we are also expanding into experiences with our own IP called Signature Green White or the Zero Festival of Music, which is all about, of course, celebrating with your friends, going out, social gatherings. But at the same time, how best can you, uh, you know, save the environment? I mean, that's the message that you want to uh, drive in the minds of the consumers. And how can you give back to the environment? Uh, with Signature, we are also driving the entire mangroves project in Odisha, which is all about restoration of the mangroves project. I'm sure you, uh, I mean, we've talked about it at scale uh, across levels. And these are some of the initiatives that we are really proud of. Uh, the last one, of course, in my portfolio is, uh, is Royal Challenge. Uh, again, one of the most uh, most energetic and vibrant brand which communicates on the platform of cricket and IPL. Uh, but with that as well, with the recent campaign there, we challenged con conventions by featuring in uh, plus size models, you know, going out there and expressing themselves. And of course, uh, driving the message on responsible drinking as well uh, with, uh, with, with, with the campaign that we did around choose bold, choose water, don't succumb to the pressures of of uh, of your friends, you know, take a break and uh, and drink some water. 
So yeah, a lot of exciting time in the category. It's all towards premiumization. It's our focus is around premiumization and you know offering bespoke liquids, differentiated liquids, high quality liquids to our consumers. And at the same time, from a messaging standpoint, it's all about purposeful uh, brand positioning from our side. That's a lot to take in, that, uh, Varun. But uh, you know, you mentioned that consumer habits, which uh, changed during the pandemic, continued after even after normalcy returned. This is not seen. This has not been seen in many other categories. So why so? And what factors are driving growth for the segment? I think, uh, yeah, this it is. It is. It is an interesting one, right? Uh, during the pandemic, of course, social gatherings had come down, uh, and people had to pretty much entertain themselves while being locked indoors. So people found newer ways through Zoom calls, etc., to get in touch with people, form their own, uh, uh, you know, own way of, uh, of 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 meeting socially or partying socially as well. Gosh, as I say it, it seems like ages ago. It was just about two years back, but. That's where a huge amount of experimentation has started. And people beyond a point had, you know, had, had pretty much made up their mind that it's all going to be about drinking better versus drinking a lot. And and yes, that pretty much stayed, uh, you know, and as we are coming out now uh, uh, of the pandemic, of course, uh, you know, social gatherings have obviously come back. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same levels as the pre-pandemic level. Of course, there was a, there was a complete burst uh, immediately after the pandemic, but prices have gone up. Price of experiences have gone up, and you're seeing a lot of uh, you know in-home drinking still staying, and hence consumers are still seeking you know better liquids, wanting to drink better versus wanting to drink more. And there are two cohorts I would say uh, you know which are driving growth of the category. Where of course is people who are entering the legal drinking age. Those are the people who, you know, we want to ensure, uh, you know, they are, that, that we are covered when it comes to their needs. As they are entering, uh, you know, uh, this particular category, they are very experimentative. So they are, they are very high on repertoire. Uh, they are experimenting between different categories, different liquids. And then uh, there, of, there, there is, of course, betterment, which I, which I spoke about. It's all about drinking better, drinking premium, you know, and, and really associating with brands which resonate really well with them. Brands which are purposeful, which are giving back to the society, which stand for, uh, which which stand for doing good, right? And then of course there is you know them seeking different flavors, them seeking convenience. So this is this is of course one part. Uh, the other of course is the affluent, and I'm sure you would have seen this. The affluence have skyrocketed, you know, especially in India. More and more people, more and more households are now entering into this particular category. In fact. Uh, I was given this number that about 45% of the households in India will move into this affluent category by, by the year 2030. Now, these folks are wanting superior liquids, uh, bespoke experiences. Uh, they want to know about the, the craftsmanship uh, you know, of the liquid, etc. Uh, and hence, these are the folks who are driving that entire premiumization. So from our side, essentially, we need to ensure that you know, we are meeting the needs of, of both these categories, of both these categories of consumers. So it's not a or strategy for us, it's an and strategy for us when it comes to driving growth in the category. I was going to ask you, you know, what is the changes seen in the consumer profile? Yeah. So you've kind of uh, answered that you're seeing more of the younger generation, which in this case would be the Gen Zs entering into the drinking drinking scene. And also you mentioned the affluent. But are there any other consumer profile changes that you've seen? What I'm saying are more women taking to premium drinking. Uh, what is the growth that you're seeing from the smaller towns and smaller cities, or is it more metro centric? No, it's it's all across, really. And thanks for asking that question. It's a very important point uh, and uh, uh, something that we that we are witnessing. Uh, one of course is boom towns. So from a geographical standpoint, uh, you know, boom towns are performing really well. There are consumers there as well who want to drink, uh, who want to drink better, and you know, they are willing to pay hence a lot. A lot more, or, or slightly more, or more, you know, for these uh, for these drinks versus versus before, and the point around women, of course, uh, you know, there is more women, uh, there is more economic uh, empowerment that we are witnessing uh, when it comes to women. Uh, you know, the uh, 
the pressures that used to exist, the societal pressures, etc., are going away. Women are, are far more empowered into making decisions for themselves. So we are seeing, of course, a lot more women entering into this particular category. Uh, um, they are consuming, uh, but they are. I think that consumption is happening more from a social gathering standpoint versus was in home. So that's that's really a trend that we are definitely witnessing. And then again, from our side, we need to ensure that, you know, we are inclusive when it comes to our communications or the products that we that we come out with, the innovations that we come out with. So yeah, that's that's definitely another big trend that's happening in this category. You mentioned communication. So how has Diageo's uh, marketing strategy evolved? Yeah, so I mean, I, I think I, I spoke about it uh, slightly earlier, but but to talk about it in detail, it's all about you know front and center brand purposeful positioning, you know, and and ensuring that uh, that we are uh, we are we're targeting distinct uh, you know propositions across all of our brands, you know, driving be it driving sustainability, be it driving you know meaning or distinctiveness across across all of our brands. Uh, Again, signature, like I mentioned, you know, a, a brand that is all about living good and doing good and giving back to the society. Um, with with signature, it's uh, it's it's really about just just driving this entire message around saving the environment, driving sustainability, and hence we came out with you know uh, uh, these these two uh, one experiential IP called Signature Green Vibes and the other association with a very famous Zero Festival of Music. Both of these are all about going out, enjoying yourself, expressing yourself, you know, listening to music, but at the same time, taking care of the environment and giving back, uh, you know, uh, giving back and not harming the environment. Uh, and uh, at, at the same time, Mangrove's project is something that I alluded to in the beginning. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a project that we at Diageo are very proud of, you know, the regeneration of the Mangrove's project in Orissa. Uh, you know, working very strongly with the communities uh, in Orissa to uh, to regenerate, to protect the uh, the mangroves, because at the end of the day, um, you know, mangroves essentially they they, they stem erosion and uh, they are uh, they drive carbon neutrality as well and uh, and provide food security. So so it's all it's all connected uh, at that end. And when it comes to uh, Royal Challenge, for example, it's Royal Challenge is it's it's, uh, it's, uh, it's challenging the accepted norms of uh, of beauty, and that's when we we caught some uh, you know plus size models to come out and express themselves, choose bold, um, and within the Royal Challenge portfolio, we came out with another campaign around drinking responsibly, you know, choosing water and not succumbing to peer pressure. Uh, same with the Karthik Aryan campaign when we looked at Saad, who's a hearing impaired actor, to feature in, and then you know providing our support to uh, you know the differentially abled uh, uh, folk, and especially in in advertising. So it's it's pretty much embedded across all of our initiatives that we are doing across all brand communications. Yeah, you also recently signed on Karthik Aryan, who became the face for the House of McDonald's glassware yeah. for your new campaign, Yarowali Bath. Firstly, why Karthik Aryan and how does this friendship uh, proposition over the years help build the brand? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, he, Karthik Aryan, uh, when we were looking at, uh, when we were looking at, uh, you know, the entire brand narrative, etc., Karthik Aryan fits pretty much like a glove, uh, you know, into this entire, in, 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 entire brand campaign. Um, as far as McDonald's is concerned, the idea is essentially to, again, drive distinction, drive purposeful brand positioning, right? And, uh, you know, the brand is all about, uh, you know, creating limitless possibilities uh, in, in, in friendship. And Karthik Aryan, he resonates really well, you know, as, uh, and he's got this boy next door uh, kind of an image. He is, he's, he's very relatable. Uh, and of course, with the work that he's done in the past, it's all about, you know, stronger friendships, etc. So, it, it it seemed like you know he would be a, a super strong uh, connect, especially for this generation. And as we have seen from the launch of this particular campaign as well, the kind of messaging that we are getting back from the consumers, it's very positive. And Karthik Aryan is working really well, so it was a, it was a great decision, and we we will continue to be associated with with Karthik Aryan. As far as friendship is concerned, I think uh, uh, number one Yari here was always there with the brand. You know, it's a it's such a strong uh, insight around friendship. That resonates. That has resonated really well with the uh, with the consumers uh, over the past. Now, as we expand into the house of McDonald's and start talking about premiumizing the brand, 
this is our first step into uh, you know expanding it from number one Yali to uh, to Yaru and uh, and we are pretty confident that uh, that it's going to work well for us. You know, you've spoken a lot about brand purpose uh, across categories, be it people with special needs, the mangrove project, etc. And the Aju has also been a big proponent for responsible drinking. Yeah. How does this help bring brand salience with your customers? Yeah, look, first and foremost, when it comes to, uh, you know, responsible drinking, uh, you know, globally, it is, uh, you know, it's our society, it's part of our society 2030 goal and we we work, you know, across educational uh, institutions, etc., to impart, uh, you know, the ill effects of, uh, of 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 excessive drinking, and that we we believe we strongly believe that sets us apart from our competitors, right? Uh, and we are seeing when it comes to you know responsible drinking consumers at the end of the day, they are seeking they are seeking better liquids. They and they are seeking better liquids, and they are willing to pay more for those, right? And and hence, it, we pretty much take this as take this upon us to premiumize and offer those better liquids quickly, right? And there's a huge amount of work that is happening around innovations, etc., to do exactly that. Uh, you know, premiumization is a trend that has started by consumers, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, it is our responsibility to kind of give back to those consumers with those beautiful liquids, which are which 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 pro, which, which connect uh, you know at a deeper level with the with the consumers. And we also see that young consumers of today. They relate with brands that want to talk, you know, and and hence it was, you know, us going completely bold on on Royal Challenge and saying, hey, you know what, we are going to be doing a campaign around uh, around choose bold and choose water, uh, you know, as consumers sometimes with the peer groups you you succumb under pressure and you 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 go at it right, and this was a campaign which said, hey, you know what, take a break, don't succumb to the peer pressure. Choose, choose bold, be bold, and choose water. Looking ahead, what is the growth that you anticipate for Diageo, particularly your category? Any particular brand that you believe will be the growth driver? Because Signature, House of McDonald's. So, where do you see which would be which would be the leader when it comes to driving the growth? It's uh, I, I I don't. I don't think we look at uh, uh, look at any of these brands like that. We need to ensure that our brands are well positioned to address the needs of the consumers, right? So it's not just about one brand, but the entire category itself. And like I mentioned before, the category is moving towards premiumization, right? That's the uh, that's the big word essentially, uh, you know, within the industry and the category. And more and more consumers are, you know, wanting to drink better, uh, wanting are willing to pay more hence for these offerings. And we need to ensure from our side that all of our brands are ready, uh, you know, to ride on, on, on this particular journey to offer these premium uh, premium uh, propositions to the consumers. So I don't think it's going to be about one brand ever. It'll be about the entire portfolio, Jeff. And hence, you will see the premiumization journey across, uh, you know, across the entire portfolio. And I'm sure this is pretty much the industry talking as well. And you mentioned uh, double-digit growth. So where do you see looking ahead? High double-digit growth, How? what about? Oh, I think uh, these are, again, industry numbers that I, I, I was reading, uh, but it, it's going to continue to grow. Premiumization is something which is here to stay. And uh, and I, I, I personally believe uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a, a very exciting journey for this entire uh, category, I think, going forward. And it's upon us how quickly can we premise. You know, experience is something which is so integral to your category, right? Yeah. Uh, now, and the other element which is, uh, you know, over the past five to six years, which we've seen in marketing is the increased use of technology. So yeah. if you can just share an example, how you're leveraging technology to elevate consumer experience and also drive customer centricity. Yeah. Um, I think there are there are a huge amount of uh, initiatives that we've already taken, and there's a huge amount of experimentation that is already going on in terms of uh, you know how best can we use technology to reach reach our uh, consumers with the right messaging. I think the biggest example that we are uh, very proud of uh, is is something that we had launched earlier called inthebar.com. So in the bar.com is essentially a website and it's a it's a go-to place for uh, you know for celebrations for creating and curating uh, you know special uh, or for celebrating special moments 
and uh, we are witnessing great traction on uh, on on this particular website in the bar dot com. Uh, in fact, in November and October, we got two hundred nineteen thousand consumers engaging with our brands. Uh, you know, coming to us for cocktail recipes, bar, you know, bartending, hosting a party, etc. So we are seeing a lot of traction there, and hence we are you know engaging with these consumers practically on a one on one basis sometimes. Uh, the other, of course, is the use of marketing technology, which is uh, uh, which is pretty much embedded in the entire category called customer relationship management, right? And you know, and ensuring that 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 we we have the right kind of data and how best are we able to use that to offer you know some really amazing experiences to our consumers as we as we reach out to them. And then, of course, uh, is e-commerce. E-commerce, however, small because it still uh, you know attracts a lot of government uh, regulations. Uh, this is something that we are looking at closely from a uh, you know from a government standpoint. But uh, when it comes to West Bengal specifically, that's one case where we are uh, we are working around uh, you know uh, reaching out to our consumers to, through through various platforms, thereby creating a complete uh, you know omni-channel approach to uh, to our distribution and marketing. ASCII updated its guidelines for qualification of brand extension products and services. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, look. We believe in self-regulation, so uh, you know it's uh, uh, even before or even after. I mean, our our policies are are themselves very very strong, you know, uh, mandates in themselves, and we've we've got we govern ourselves very very strongly, and uh, you know we uh, we have things like the International Alliance for Responsible Drinking, and then there is the Diageo Marketing Code itself, which is very very strict, and hence you know these are things that we. We automatically follow. So, so I think, I think following these rules meticulously um, and ensuring that all of our brand extensions conform to the, you know, uh, conform to the legalities of the government, our legitimate businesses themselves, uh, are something that we ensure. Uh, you know, so, so yes, I mean, there is there there are aspect guidelines, but at the same time, you know, we have our own own laws which are which are super strict. And we follow them meticulously. Yeah. Uh, finally, what are the marketing trends that you foresee or are betting on for 2024? Yeah, look, I mean, premiumization is something that uh, I think uh, I think we've spoken widely about. So that's that's the that's the thing that's going to continue. Sustainability, more and more, as more and more younger consumers, the millennials are coming into the into the category, the LDS, etc. Driving purposeful brand positioning, sustainability is going to be a trend, and you will pretty much see brands across which are going to be communicating at a much deeper level uh, with the consumers. And of course, we spoke about digital transformation and e-commerce. Uh, this is something that will that will definitely continue within this category as well. Uh, you know, just to ensure that we are able to offer some really amazing experiences to our consumers. You know, maybe with the help of AI as well. So, so yeah, these are uh, exciting times. Like I said, experiential marketing is going to be uh, going to be another one where we're going to be using technology, etc., to bring some really amazing uh, activations to life. Anything else you'd like to add, Varun? Uh, I think it's it's for us really the 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 bigger message, the larger message is accelerating our play. Uh, you know, within the prestige portfolio by brand purposeful positioning and premiumizing, premiumization, and premiumization is here to stay. And uh, it's it's really upon us now how quickly we can uh, we can accelerate and offer offer some really amazing propositions and brings to our consumers. Thank you so much, Varun, from your time. And here's hoping the next year brings in high spirits for the IGO. Thank you so much, Simran. It was wonderful chatting with you. Thanks so much.